When the solid ground is falling now underneath my feet Between the black skies and my red eyes I can barely see When I realize I've been sold out by my friends and my family I can feel the rain reminding me In the eye of the storm You remain in control In the middle of the war You got my soul You alone are the anchor When my sails are torn Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm, in the eye, in the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. There is peace, there is healing, there is hope, there is fear. Hello everybody, my name is Mike LeClaire and I'm the pastor of Living Hope Church and I'm here to share my weekly Hear Journal with you. Uh, before we get into it, I just want to remind you once again to join us in the study of God's Word together. It's relatively simple, it probably takes about a half hour of your time, maybe. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less. But in the study, what we do is we've come up with a, a thing we call a Hear Journal. And the Hear Journal is just a way of processing God's Word and seeing how it applies to our life. So what I do is I find a scripture, I do a little study on it and explain it. Once I've explained the study a little bit, I look at its application. How does it apply to my life? And then finally, what's my response to it? And uh, I can always find a response to God's word. And I can always find application to God's word in my life. And that's the aim. And it, it gets us uh, becoming students of God's word and uh, it, it begins to change us. So we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we know that it is the word of God that watch, washes us and cleanses us. And uh, for these reasons, we spend time as a church going over these scriptures together on our own time. So next week, we're going to be going over Genesis chapter 45 verses 1 through 28. This week, we're going over Genesis 37 verses 1 through 36. And the, the highlight scripture that I'm choosing out of this bank of scriptures is Genesis 37, verses 9 through 11. And it says, Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time the sun, the moon, and, and the eleven stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers and his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? 
Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come down and bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him, but his father kept the matter in his mind. Well, this isn't the first dream, as I said. This is the second dream that he's had. And each time, it, it ends up in his brothers bowing down before him, that he is in this place of authority, and he is special, and that God is going to use him, and that his brothers will worship him. And uh, it doesn't sit well with them. So in Genesis 37, 7, it says, They were binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf arose and stood upright, and indeed your sheaves stood around, all around and bowed down to my sheaf. All right, that was the first dream. And so you get a sense as to what the brothers are feeling. They're also dealing with the issue that he's kind of the favored son of his father Jacob. And that doesn't sit well with him. And there's, there's, a, there's a grand story that goes along with this. But in this portion of it, this lays the foundation for their frustration and anger with Joseph. But it says here, at the end of that, but his father kept the matter in mind. It's significant. And why? Why did he keep this in his mind? He doesn't like the idea of bowing down before his son. So what's going on here? Well, if you go back to Genesis 28, the father had a dream. And in his dream, there was a ladder that came down from heaven. We went over this over the last couple of weeks. And he saw angels ascending and descending from earth to heaven and back and forth. And then God gives him a prophecy in Genesis 28 that says he will be the line through which God works his redemptive work, which will bring the Redeemer down his line. He says, your, your posterity or your, your children will be as the dust of the air. It'll be as the sands of the sea. It'll be as the stars of the sky. Numerous offspring, which is a blessing. And many of those things came to pass. Not totally fulfilled, but many of them fulfilled. And they came to pass, and he remembered that when God speaks to him, sometimes he speaks to him in dreams. We know in Joel 228, it talks about uh, young men and old men and dreams and visions that we'll receive, especially as we see the day approaching in the last days. And so with that all said, what I do is I go to my application and I have to recognize that God does indeed gift people. And he gives them gifts that are different than mine. Sometimes he gives people to the ability to see and hear from him in dreams and visions. Sometimes he gives people the ability to um, process and understand what those things mean. He gives them understanding of dreams and visions. And he gives people different gifts, different than mine. And when I begin to step back and look at the whole thing of what God is doing, he is equipping people for his purposes, for his glory, for the work that he has set before them. And I need to not be like the brothers and I need to not get jealous over the gifts that God has given another person, over the powers that he's given another person, the, the ability to do different things that I'm not really strong in. And I, I need to come to the place where I embrace those things. And that, that's really what my application is, uh, of this is. I have to always be aware that God does indeed give gifts to men and not to dismiss the gifts that he gives people. So when people have gifts of prophecy, when people have a word of knowledge, when people speak in other tongues, when people lay hands on people and they get healed, those are gifts from God and I need to learn to appreciate the gifts in them. And then he says that I am to desire all the gifts. Desire them all. And I'll have a strength in one or two. But that's how it should work. I should desire them but not envy others that have them and appreciate how God works through them. These men, these brothers, will come to a place where the dream is fulfilled and they will be glad that it's fulfilled because it will be for the salvation of their physical bodies. He will save them from starvation. And it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing how God has orchestrated and worked all this out, and yet God will still fulfill the promises of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob. 
and now through Joseph and, and how J Joseph saves the family during these terrible famines that they're going to be going through. My response is, Lord, help me to discern the gifting in people and to encourage them in their gifting. Let me not ever grow jealous over the gifts that you have blessed other, others with, but instead let me rejoice in the gifting of others. And I pray this in Jesus' name. In my prayer for you right now, if you don't know who Christ is, that you receive the gift of salvation that he gives freely. That's my heart if you don't know who he is. If you do know who he is and he has already saved you to be with him eternally, I pray that God would begin to reveal to you what gifts he has given you and that they would come and they would be manifest and they would be uh, for the glory of God, that you'd be able to sense what he's given. You'd be, begin to operate in those gifts to bless other people. Not that you're anything special, but that God chose to use you in this particular way. I pray that that come to you in Jesus' name. And then in Luke, I think it's chapter 11, it speaks about God giving good gifts. And uh, he doesn't give a stone instead of bread. He doesn't give a serpent. You know, he gives good gifts. And it says, especially the Holy Spirit. So you ask God for the Holy Spirit. God, give me your Holy Spirit and the gifts that come with the Spirit and let me use them for your glory. I pray for that for you. Ask him for the gift. I pray these things now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.